around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Sell us a decent drink. Me and my brother will have a drink of whiskey. There's the bottle. Me and my brother are used to the best whiskey there is. Isn't that right, Jess? That's right, Clay. Is this your best whiskey? It's what we got, mister. We'll see. You call that whiskey? Now look here, haven't you? You call that, that whiskey, whiskey, Jess? Go on, drink it. <laughs> that ain't whiskey. You got to do better than that, Mister Boy. I told you, friend, that's the whiskey we got. You don't have to drink. You got to do better than that. Now you dig out a bottle of good whiskey because we don't like this one. Hey. You're going to pay for that bottle, Mister. Listen to him, Jeff. He says we're going to pay for that bottle. You hear that? I heard it. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Barkeep. We ain't going to pay for that bottle, and we ain't going to pay for this one. <laughs> well, come to think of it, maybe I do have a better one down here under the bar. You hold it, Mr. Govern, Jess. Now, you wouldn't want to come up with no gun, Mr. Barkeep. That wouldn't be healthy. Jess can shoot real good. Go and show him, Jess. No, no, there's no need for shooting. I, I don't want no trouble. You show him anyway, Jess. Pick off some of them glasses all lined up so nice and pretty. <laughs> That's real nice, Jess. You've got no call Listen, to shoot up my... Listen, Mr. Barkeep. You're lucky Jess don't drill some holes through them whiskey bottles on the shelf there. The way he did a couple of places up the street. Come on, Jess. Let's you and me try the next saloon. Maybe they got some real drinking whiskey. You're pretty lucky at that, Jim. They've been all over Dollar drinking places, acting like it was a joke. I sure wish Marshal Dillon would get back to town and start doing his job around here. He's doggone if I'm going to do it for him. Glad to get back to Dodge, Mr. Dillon. Wichita just ain't my kind of town. Uh, Especially for five days. I didn't think that cussed trial would last that long, did you? No. Now, sir, Wichita's just too blame fancy a town for me. Why, you know they lot of fellows there that wears their Sunday suits on weekdays, and they ain't gamblers nor undertakers, neither. Yeah. There's something that... Matter with you, either, Mr. Dillon? You ain't done much more than grunt for the last 20 miles. I don't feel much like talking, Chester. Or listening. Oh. Well. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
I declare you like to slid right off your horse. Yeah. Uh, thanks for catching me. I guess I was a little dizzy there for a minute. Your face is all kindly green, Mr. Dillon. You, you look awful puny. I do believe you're ailing. Yeah, I guess I am. Must have picked up some of that ague that was going around Wichita. Will you want to stop off and rest a while? I do not. It might make you feel stronger. No, I just want to get to Dodge and get off this horse. And Doc, give me a headache powder and sleep for about three days. Oh, you got a real bad headache? A little do for now. It, Mr. Dillon, did you ever try binding a snake skin around your head? A snake skin? Oh, yes, sir. My ma used to swear by it for headaches. I'd be glad to get to one. I can chase up a snake some kind of no, anywhere. No, around no, here. no, Chester. Trouble. No, I, I just think I'll let Doc stir me up something, if you don't mind. Well, all right. But do you really feel well enough to ride on now? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Now let's go. Uh, Chester. Yes, sir? We're going to town the back way, huh? I don't feel like answering any questions. Okay, sir. You can put your shirt back on, Matt. There's no question about it. You got a dose of that egg, you. I told you that the minute you walked in here. Well, I'm just telling you I agree with you. Oh, thanks. Now, do you want me to prescribe for myself, or are you willing to take that on? Yeah, my, the fever sure hasn't improved your disposition any. I'm going to give you a couple of powders to make your head quit hurting. And if you'll take my advice, you'll stay down for the better part of a week. Until this thing wears itself out. Yeah, for once you're giving me advice, I'll take. I'm going to stay on this cot whether school keeps or not. I'll send the powders over by Chester. And then I'll look in on you again this evening. By then, I hope either the fever or your temper has improved. Thanks for nothing, Doc. Yeah. Marshal Dillon? Oh, hello, Doc. Ed Doby. See you later, man. Well, Marshal, I sure am glad you're back in town. Those two fellas just about wrecked it. About time you got here to stop him. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Dobby. What two fellows? What are you talking about? Why, the Rook brothers. They busted up just about every saloon in Dodge. Scandalous the way they're carrying on. Now, who are the Rook brothers? Why, those fellows dropped off here after the last cattle drive hit Dodge. They stayed right on. You've been gone five days, you know. I know how long I've been gone. All right, tell me exactly what have these fellows been doing. Well, they've been going from saloon to saloon just like it was a big joke. Smashing bottles and glasses wherever they go. And I want you to put a stop to it. Uh Uh-huh. You're worried that they'll come into the Dodge House next, is that it? Of course I'm worried about the Dodge House, Marshal. I run it. It's my job to worry about it. And I don't want those fellas causing trouble over there. Have they killed anybody? Well, no. Have they hurt anybody? No, Marshal. But the Dodge House is entitled to protection. Well, why don't you go right back over there and protect it, then? Ain't you going out and get them? No, Doby, I'm not. I'm going to stay right here on this cot, and I'm going to try to go to sleep. I don't feel good, and you're making me feel a lot worse. Now, Marshal, it's your Listen, duty. Listen, Doby, i got one duty right now, and it's to get some sleep. Now, my advice to you is to put your breakables away until the Rook brothers get tired. It's up to the law. I'll tell you what I'll do, Doby. I'll be glad to deputize you right now, and then you can be the law, huh? No, I, I don't want to be a deputy. I'm just a plain citizen. It's your town, too, you know. Well, I know. Now, you citizens ought to be able to handle a couple of cow hands without calling the Federals up. I don't think folks are going to take kindly to this, Marshal. No? You let me worry about that, huh? I'll do that. I certainly will. You find him, Doby? I found him all right. He's in there lying down on his cot. Says he's going to stay there. You mean he's not going to do anything? Uh, just a minute, just a minute. I'm telling you exactly what happened. I went in there and told the marshal the whole story. And he says he's not going to do anything. Says he wants to go to sleep. Oh, you sure don't sound like Dylan. No, I don't. 
He's a changed man, I tell you. A changed man. <laughs> this whiskey ain't so bad in this saloon as in most jest. Let's see what else they got to sell. <laughs> well, they got pretty girls. You see that? You see that, Jeff? I see. I think maybe I'll just sit down and drink my whiskey with this little lady. Well, don't bother on my account. Webb here is good enough company for me. I sure am, mister. Yeah. Hey, now, yeah. just a minute. You can just stay here and watch me. You might learn something. Mister, the lady is sitting with me. Well, now she's sitting with both of us. Ain't that nice? Don't you think that's nice, little lady? In about one minute, I'll tell you what I think. You heard her, mister. There's one too many at this table to suit me. Well, now, we can sure fix that. Can we, little lady? You could leave. that would fix it. That's not exactly what I had in mind. Now, we can do all this nice and polite-like... My name is Clayt Rook, and this here is my brother, Jess. You, mister, you're free to leave. But I ain't about to leave. All right. Then you just sit there quiet-like and watch me and this nice little lady have a good time. You keep your hands to yourself. Quit mauling her. You're quite a little gentleman, ain't you? But you wouldn't want no trouble, would you? Jess... Yeah, show the man some tricks. I heard about you and how you carry your brother around to do your shooting for you. Ooh, I can shoot, mister. Then come on outside. We can sure find out about that. No need for waiting, mister. I can kill you while I'm sitting right here. Well, well. Me. Come on, come on, I wonder if this will get the marshal off that cot. You shouldn't ought to shot him, Clay. I didn't notice you doing nothing. Let's get out of here, Jesse. Matt? Matt? Uh, uh, well, what's the matter, Kenny? He's killed Webb Hayes. Uh, Webb Hayes? Who killed him? When? What? It was just now down to Long Branch. One of those brothers. Oh, you mean those Rook brothers? Yeah. It was the big one, did it? Clayt. The one that does all the talking. Usually he has his brother do the shooting, but this time he did it himself. Matt, he didn't give Webb a chance. Oh, where did Chester put my gun? Huh? Oh. Here it is, Matt. Oh, oh thanks, Kitty. Oh, Matt. You look weak as a woman. You don't walk too steady. Oh, that's sure true. Dylan? Yeah, I know, Chester. Kitty just told me. You know where they are. Well, they was headed for the nearest table, but if you feel so bad, you are... Well, I guess I feel well enough to get shot at, Chester. Come on. Table, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, that's what they're counting on. It makes us stand out awful clear being out here in the sun, don't it? Yeah, just keep close to the building as you can, huh? You got a plan? Well, work up along the side here. Play it the way the cards fall. Yes, sir. You're covered two ways, Marshal. You better drop your gun. Let us clear out of here. Just stand quiet, Chester. My brother's in the shed behind you. Tell him, Jess. I'm here, Clay. Shoot him, Jess. I'm coming out, Clay. But I ain't gonna fire. You shoot him, Jess, or I'll open up on you. I don't hold with shooting people, Clay. Why, you dirty... You covered Jess. Chester, I'll handle Clay. Yes, sir. Clay, 
Wait. We just shot down your brother. You're on your own now. There's two of you, ain't there, Marshal? You can make it easy on yourself. Just throw out your gun. Yeah. Could do that. Only I ain't gonna... You get him, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, I think so, Chester. Come on. I don't think he's hurt bad. Anyways, I got his gun. Now, let's have a look at him. You... You shoot Clay, Marshal? Yeah. He's dead, Jess. He shouldn't ought to kill that man. I don't hold with shooting people. Shooting up bottles is different. But I don't hold with shooting people, Marshal. You heard by that. Funny thing. Clay shot me in my gun arm. It's going to be a while before I can use it. Well, the saloon keepers will be glad to hear that. That's a fact. You better go find Doc Adams and get your arm fixed up. And then you ride out of town, huh? Tell you the truth, Marshal. I'll be glad to get out of Dodge. You gonna see that Clay's buried? Yeah, we'll see that he's buried. I'll take care of things here, Mr. Jones. Okay, thanks, Chess. know that I'm mighty pleased with the way you handled everything. Of course, you could have stopped it before it got so bad. So could the rest of you. Yes, but uh, uh, anyway, Marshal, I, I want to thank you. The Dodge House still standing, do we? Yes, it is. You suppose everything's going to be all right for a little while? Oh, yes. And I'm glad to hear it. Now, you're blocking my way, do we? I'm going to go back to the office and try to get some sleep. Thank you. Good afternoon, gentlemen. and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Vic Perrin, Harry Bartell, Lawrence Dobkin, James Nusser, Barney Phillips, and Don Diamond. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke. America listens most to the CBS Radio Network.